welcome to episode 22 of Talking Small Press Comics with Steve Keeter and me, Larned Justin. That was Steve that pointed to his head, in case you didn't know. Yeah, that's him pointing at me. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, okay, let's get started. You said you had something you wanted to do right off the bat, so but let's do that. Our pal, my pal, Jim Maine, who I've known for like 50 years. <laughs> yeah, um, I met Jim Maine. Before. I've met him. <laughs> yeah, there's that for a long time. Uh, he was the chairman of the UFO numerous times. As I would, mm -hmm. We used to go back and forth. You know, one year he was the chairman, the next year I was the chairman. It just kept going back and forth. Uh -huh. And we revived the BPP as a separate co-op in the early 2000s. But he's been publishing Pazit. For instance, since ooh, 1972. Amazing. Anyway, I have a copy of Posit number one here in faded purple ditto. Oh. Uh, but I'm not going to break that out right now. So yeah. It would take a lot of work to look through all them zines. But Jim, <laughs> Jim, um, he wanted me, he just wanted us to mention that um, if you need to get in touch with him, his 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 PC crashed, and he's using his wife's computer. And uh, if you need to send him anything, or if you need to contact him, contact him at, at this, the Gmail address, mainjim23 at uh, gmail.com. Okay. It's in here somewhere. I, yeah, I see it there, the yeah. Backwards. I'll Main put that Jim, in the, uh, I'll put that in the description of this video. And you know, he also him. asked that everybody send him their address um because he's lost right. everybody's address he lost everything when it when the yeah. pc crashed so i sent him mine and so did i uh, yeah but anyway yeah he's lost that's terrible i hate that yeah. <laughs> so he's starting from scratch and he's using yeah. his wife's computer and uh, he's lost a lot of stuff yeah uh, but somehow jim is uh well he's working on uh let me see what he says here he's working on posit Number 50. Well, isn't it heroic coming out? Isn't that his the thing that this one is heroic? This is something yeah. else he's getting ready to publish. You know, Tom Felrath publishes. A right. But heroic. Jim, I think, did it before. Uh, well, I mean, they're they're actually different zines with the same yeah. title. Tom, Jim published heroic way back in. Who the yeah, 80s. they're quite different. And, they're, uh, they're really different. Yeah. And uh, Tom asked, could he use that title? Mm -hmm. when Jim retired it and um, so Tom published Heroic and now Jim's publishing another Heroic again yeah. um, <laughs> this is I printed this out because it's not out yet but it should be out any day now yeah and, you know, but they're different they're very different so just stuff. happen to have the same name and okay. the, his, it's a milestone for Jim that he's going to be publishing Posit number 50 uh, in fact, number 49, it should be back from the printer anytime he says he's going to send us a copy. So we'll be able to review that soon. And then number 50, he's looking for contributions uh, for that issue. And gee whiz, I probably should do something. Yeah. It's a milestone. Yeah, I probably should too. Yeah. we uh, Maybe we can draw some more. stick men or something. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't want to do a lot of work, you know. <laughs> But he's he's an old pal. I mean, he's even we've even published the same comics. You know, I mean, he published, I published um, and he published um, and then went back to oh, me. really. <laughs> we've gone back and forth on on several titles. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Jim, we we met, you asked us to mention it. We mentioned it, and all best. And we're looking forward to that visit number fifty. We're looking forward to forty nine as well. But yeah, <laughs> he's retired now. Lucky guy. Yeah, join me. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm semi retired. I'm semi retired. Yeah, I know it's getting close for you. Yeah, yeah well, I'm getting Medicare now. Oh, good, good. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we going from here? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get started with the. Let's go with uh, Dark Girl. Okay, we got Dark Girl here. This is Dark Floyd Girl, Lewis. and this is Dark Girl number one from yeah. Floyd. Lewis, and guess when this was published? 1979. 1979. This is yeah. a reprint. 
This is a reprint. There's actually two. Back then it was 25 cents, and there's actually two comics in here. Each one was 25 cents. Right. And Dark Girl is the first story. And, you know, it's, uh, let's face it, he had to be pretty young in 1979. Yeah. And this is the best he's as old as me. Where she's like almost naked. Yeah, pretty yeah. much through the whole thing, and she's kind of, kind of depressed. Were young, in 1979, that's where your mind was. Yeah. Yes. If he, <laughs> yes, if he was a teenager, you know, 14, 15 years old, of course, that's where his mind was. <laughs> but it's pretty cool to see it all these years later. And the, yeah. artwork, the artwork stands the test of time. I mean, Actually, yeah, right there, for that. that I, I think the artwork is not bad at all for somebody that had to be pretty yeah. young when he did it. Yeah, and then and the, the other, other story, story in here is um, done a little different style. Let me uh, get into it. It's a little different style. Very dark with a lot of lines. Right. And yeah. it's this is, very This effective. story here, pretty unusual. <laughs> You hate to give it away, but uh, there's a real twist in the end of this story. <laughs> yeah. Right. There's, a, there's an ironic uh, twist yeah. at the end. Yeah. I don't even know how that would be possible, the twist. I don't see how it would be possible, but you guys get the the book for a buck and you figure it out. <laughs> Here's the deal. As, as a boy sitting in front of his TV, watching yes. TV, this is an image of this beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. And he can't get it out of his mind. Right. So Even like, after he gets married, he can't get it out of his mind. He's married. Yeah, so he's, he's like, married, and I, he's still infatuated with this, with this girl. But I'm not going to tell you what happens, because <laughs> that would ruinate it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's quite a surprise ending. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot also, Floyd has done the Batman technical manual, where he has uh, kind of like blueprints of all the Batman equipment, the Batmobile, the motorcycle there, yeah. uh, the layout of the cave. It's all in here. The, the Adam West version, but all the stuff that was on the TV series. Yeah. Yeah, I saw all, like, this must be obviously more recent. I, I would assume you've got the boat. Look at that. There's the boat. Yeah, the boat. Yeah, the bat boat. Yeah, that was in the movie. Yeah. Uh, that, and uh, uh, Batman movie that Adam West did. It could be that he includes this free. I don't know that, but there's no price or anything on it. It may come free if you order Dark Girl, you know. There's the Bat Cave. Yeah, Bat the Cave. Diagram. Uh, <laughs> awesome. And then he included with mine, he included this uh, 8 by 11 sheet, which says on here that he is looking for Dark Girl number two from 1979. And he can't, he's asking people if they have a copy. He doesn't have his copy anymore. And he's asking if people would you know, if they have it, to let him know, you know, That's he would tragic. really appreciate Something it. you published years ago that you 1979 really, again, I'm the second it, issue. You yeah. don't have it anymore. No. Um, I, I, I've been looking for the very the UFO newsletter, the BPP newsletter. When I took over the group, mm -hmm. uh, Carl Gafford published six issues. And, um, you know, I took it over in the early 70s and. It was, his was volume one. I was volume two. Number one was the a newsletter I published, only two pages long, and I sent it out to a lot of people. You can't find it now. Um, I, I've <laughs> lost my copy. I can't find it to save my life. I don't know what happened. I wish I had it. Yeah, something else that's on here. Um, there's a uh, at the bottom of this page. There's a uh, computer generated cartoon called Ricochet. McGlade. You can see it right here on the bottom. Yeah. And it's computer generated, basically the figures are. Floyd and is he does this kind of stuff. for Joe Bagden. Mm -hmm. Joe Bagden's comics. He he features some of these in his comic. Yeah. 
And we reviewed Joe Bagden's comic, and we, we saw that. You know, we looked at it, and uh, we said, boy, that's pretty neat. And sure enough, it was Floyd Lewis that did it. Yeah, but it didn't connect. We didn't know that. You know, like, no, we didn't know it at the time. He was doing something and different. Back, here, but... He has a computer-generated complete little story. But this yeah. is also animated on his webpage. Marvin on the bridge. Yeah, it's, you know, it's animated on his webpage. I got to go back. I went to his webpage, and for some reason, I couldn't find it. I have to go back. Oh, and it's he, you could spend hours on his webpage. Yeah. There's tons of stuff on there. It's really pretty cool. I mean, you could sit there for a couple hours looking through that stuff. There's all kinds of stuff on there. So keep Very cool. that in mind. I'll get I'll get that on you know on uh, the description also. And we enjoyed so, this one a lot. Dark girl. Yeah, pretty cool. And pretty old, but pretty cool. <laughs> pretty old, but there's a lot of stuff that stands oh, it stands the test of time. It's got the extra Batman stuff and and uh, it's a new edition. So it, it, technically it's and, uh, old but new. Yeah. And we've got more uh Floyd Lewis coming up in the next episode. So he's already sent us some more stuff. Good for Floyd. Yep. Uh, up next, how about the strange and chaotic world? Strange, strange and world. chaotic world. Uh, from Rob Cooley. Rob Cooley, yes, sir. Yep. That's, Rob ran into cool. a little bit of trouble with his printer. Uh -huh. and, uh, it, it, it wasn't working and uh, I volunteered to jump in and help him print this issue uh, so very uh, nice job in this, but I didn't you know he did all the artwork and story and this is episode uh, 15 or issue 15 right Robert which is a little a, a bit of a disadvantage for me trying to review this because I don't know what happened <laughs> And all the other issues, they're continuing. And when you have continuing issues, if you don't get them all, you're going to miss the story. Yeah, the so only thing me, that was really missing, the artwork is great. And the only thing that was really missing was a recap. You know, yeah, there's no a recap, time, so recap. So it people. starts out in Russia. I know that. And then switches over into something going on in Texas. Texas. With the same right. characters. And um, Rob's style is this Very character distinct. on the left is in Russia, and you'll notice he has a ponytail. But when that same character is in Texas, he does not have the ponytail. Yeah, well, so I, don't think I, it's the same I noticed because his artwork is a little similar. So if you look over at the uh, far right, that's the sheriff. And his distinction is he has some gray hair, <laughs> but they do look similar. So you got to kind of keep that in the mind, yeah. but it's but cool the, artwork. It's different, very different. Well, the story is, it takes place in the future. It's a post, right. post apocalyptic uh, world. Um, uh, people are trying to survive. There's a virus that's killing people and, you know, a I wonder what that would be. Vir a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, you get people trying to survive. And on, in spite of all this, even though everything's in ruins, you still got um, countries that are fighting against each other, Russia against the U.S. You know, for whatever's left, the politicians just can't give it up. I mean, <laughs> now, the main character, is he referred to as the captain? Mm -hmm. The main character here? Yep. So he's the captain. That's I was. I want to make sure I understood who he was, but he's referred to as the captain, mm -hmm. I believe. And he's kind of a muscular guy. Yeah, I think his. I think he's. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here, but his his name is Samson. Something like Samson. Okay. Uh, I'd have to go back and look at the other yeah, I don't, books I don't... that Rob sent me. Uh, but yeah. that's why he's called that. And uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of just intrigue going on here. Yeah, there's and, quite a bit to it, and, and it would, like you say, it would help to have seen the previous issues and 
I'm sorry I haven't. <laughs> yeah. But this will this will hold us over. And Rob says he's got more stuff coming out. Good. Um, so I'm this is a good. series that's been going on for quite a while in several different titles uh, that Rob publishes. Mm -hmm. And this is the latest one. And uh, I think he's got something else coming out really soon. Cool. All right. So. Cooley, as a matter of fact. Rob this, Cooley. This lady is sort of a romantic interest. Yeah, she's a Russian. She's from uh, Russian. From yeah. Russia, yep. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that one. Now, I hope everybody knows who Bob Corby is. Because we have plans number one and number two from Bob Corby. Bob Corby. And if you don't know who Bob Corby is, have you ever heard of Space, the small prom, uh, small press comic show in Columbus? Bob Corby is the guy that does the tremendous amount of work to put it together and put the show on. And I'm, I've met him you know, each time I've been there. Very nice guy and uh, does a lot of work for small press to put that show on. And it, He's even been forced to change venues a number of times and at the last minute. And I don't know how he did it all. I really don't. But he's a long time uh, small presser. I mean, he's definitely, you know, he's yeah. enthusiastic and what he does to promote small press. I oh, mean, yeah. You can't overstate yeah. it. He's just. Uh, and he so goes to shows show. and, you know, other shows. I always see that he's going to a show somewhere. And, uh, but putting on space every year is a big job. But let's take a look yeah. here at plans. I wish I could have made it this year. I know Tom Felrath was there. My friend Michael yeah. Nino was there. Yeah. And lots of other small press people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would have liked to have gone too, but my wife had knee surgery and I couldn't leave her. Yeah. So, anyway, here's plans one. And this, um, it's got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six stories in here. Right. And the first one is Devil and Mr. Rift. Devil and Mr. Rift. Mr. Rift is a musician, so the name he is, is with the guitar. Yeah, you can see him with the guitar. That yeah. must be the devil. <laughs> yeah, man, that's the devil. Yeah. Yeah. And what's interesting on page two, if you look at page two here and read the bottom panel. Read what the devil says. Read what he says. Mr. What? Mr. Root? Yeah. I think Bob may have put R's in there instead of F's. Mr. Riff. <laughs> Mr. Root? Yeah. Cool, buddy. It's been a while. I think, <laughs> I think Bob put R's in there instead of F's. It's yeah. supposed to be Mr. Rift. I believe. Yep. <laughs> and, the, and the devil is his usual, a clever, completely evil because he is, in fact, the devil. Yes. Himself. And, um, you know, kind of morphs into different things here. We have a, a giant a Cthulhu type of character. That right. Appears. And uh, look at the artwork, though. Art's work, yeah. yeah, his artwork is really smooth. <laughs> Wow. I like what he does. Yeah. The, the textures that, that Bob achieves. And every, it's, it's, oh, man. Yeah. Really. So nice. So nice. And then he has a color story called Vogs right here. P U C S. Is that right? Yeah. Or Vogs. Let me look at in the -S -S front here. Yes. V U C S. Vogs. Vugs, not Vogs. Vugs. I'm colorblind, so it's a little hard for me to differ oh, it's, differentiate it's the color. Colors. There it is right yeah. there. Yeah, look at the sunflower. Yeah. Right. The sunflower. Yeah. There's a lady with a mask on. Yeah. And a sunflower. And, and a, an emergency call from 9-11. What is your emergency? Emergency call. Yeah. And... I don't know what the emergency was, but it Flower ends dogs. with this. Yeah. So we've just showed you the whole story. Yeah, we, we still did. have to buy the book. That's okay. It's, it's a yeah. short one. It's in the middle There's of the There's other book. stories in here. 
Gremlin is in here. So you got that's about a four or five page story, and then you got this is an interesting character. This Gremlin guy is in the second issue too. He's like a little short guy. Yeah, little guy. Pie, and uh, he has all sorts of adventures, and you know he goes all over the place, and uh, and it's uh. So well, we have surreal, also surreal Ian, Ian and Alien. This is Ian and Alien right here. Yeah, it took me a while to figure that out. I thought he was like Alien, but he's I, well, I had to go look in the front. I had to go Al, look in the front, and he Al says plus it's Ian. Yeah, <laughs> a Alien and Ian, I believe is what it is. And this is cool. It's a couple of Alien guys. Or Al and Ian. Special yeah. rapper. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of cool stuff. Wild, uh, and you know they go. It's, it's they're out. They're out trying to sell. They're actually trying to sell magazine subscriptions door to door. Yes, in space, <laughs> uh, somewhere the in the universe. Guys are going door to yeah. door. Now I'm not buying a comic from a guy that looks like that. I can tell right. you that right now. And they go to the door, and this guy. They open the door. The guy says, "Oh, well, I'd oh, I'd oh. slam the door too." You Close know. The door. And I think this I think this must be Bob. This must be I think that's Bob in the back, and that's uh done on clay scratch board, I believe, he says. Oh, very nice. Really mm -hmm. nice. Clayboard. Yeah. So, and he brings it on the Bob. back cover. And then, you know, ALS is uh uh the charity he supports. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. he has that on the cover also of issue well. It was in issue number two, yeah, on the inside back cover. Yes. Yeah, that these books are in support of ALS. There's the association. So this is plans two right here. Plans two is even better. And look at the hairdo on that girl. <laughs> <laughs> and here she is. And there she is, yeah. Another part of the Gremlin uh, saga. Yeah, this is part of Gremlin again. Look at that. That's yeah, nice. Gremlin. Yeah. So. And that's a pretty long story. Yeah, and it's a romance. You think this little this little Gremlin guy, this little yeah. short, weird-looking Gremlin guy, but it seems <laughs> he has a love interest here. Uh huh. Yep. He has this love interest, <laughs> and. Uh, she she tells him you know she says uh, like I love you no matter no matter what you look he said you know should I reveal myself the way I really looked and he's like oh, somewhere in here but she says I love you no matter how you look so he starts to grow uh -huh. and he ends up being this sort of semi handsome prince guy and as you can see there's the romance there it is right there but. On the last page, it says to be continued. So yep. that story yep. is but going on. This story. Then look at this, the city. Yeah. It does yeah. some interesting things. Yeah. Here he's got realistic backgrounds with figures in them, cartoon figures in the realistic backgrounds. Yeah, kind of a change of style. and Really? Yeah. And a poignant story, too. Mm-hmm about a family, uh, uh, two people in love, and they moved there with their children. They moved to yeah, the city. It's only one page, so I'm not going to show you too much of it, but it is one page. And then yeah. Bob goes full color. Pansies. Yes, this is Pansies with featuring Bob, I believe. There he is. And it looks like Bob to me. Yeah. Looks That's like Bob. Him. You know, when I when I got this and I, and I I says is that Bob? I went, I went on his Facebook page and looked for photographs. Said yeah, okay, that's Bob. <laughs> yeah, that's Bob. Yeah. Now that's a two-page story, so we can't show you too much of that. Mm -hmm. And then we go back to uh, Mr. Rift and the Demon. So anyway, Mr. Rift. Is uh, the demon a little different in in this uh, version of Mr. Rift? You notice that? Yeah, this is a likable demon. This, yeah. this this demon's kind of funny. Yeah, he's a little different. So, where is he? Right there. Yeah, 
the thing he's a <laughs> <laughs> uh, he pops in and Mr. Riff says, Can I help you? And uh it looks like he's stuck in a little bubble or something. He helps him get out of the bubble. He could use a little help here. And uh so he helps him get out of this, this little bubble spear or whatever. And then he's uh can I help you? Yeah. So let's see what the demon says. He says, I'm looking for followers. Come on, look at me. A minor demon, diminutive stature. I need worshipers to bulk up. <laughs> well, doesn't everybody easily influence souls over there? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, then he find, you know, if you look at this, he's a happy little demon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for an evil guy, he's really handsome, uh, really happy, and really likable. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and and uh, Mr. Riff says, uh, he says, my name is, name, name's Ginger. He's shaking his hand. Name's Ginger, the eternal tormentor. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you're not going to stop me. And uh, he's, uh, Mr. Riff says, uh, no, you might be useful at some point and keep some of those souls away from worse things. Anyway, anyway, they kind of make, they kinda make friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> if you can be friends with a and, demon. You know, and the, the demon guy, he's a little, you know, he's a little goofy. He yeah, he's off. A, I don't know who, who he's talking to out there in the alley. Got run over, I guess. Yeah, well, either that or he fell down the stair or something. He well, ran into something. Something happened to him. And that was but, it. He was gone. Yeah. But Walked out in the alley and... Demon disappeared <laughs> how many happy demons do you see not too many <laughs> and here is uh sam goes to the supermarket and this is weird too this is very strange <laughs> also uh bob's been having some very weird dreams I think. <laughs> <laughs> so sam is a skeleton yeah sam's a skeleton Look, see, he um, left his robe open here, and he's like, uh oh. So he puts, he covers back. He's embarrassed because he left his robe open, and he's a skeleton. So he covers yeah, up. Yeah, probably not too bad to do that. <laughs> but he, he is wearing a mask, um, yep. which is important, you know, for a skeleton to wear a mask. <laughs> if you want to catch anything at the grocery store. All right. He goes shopping. Yeah, he's shopping at the grocery store. And of course, he screws the whole thing up. Yeah, he has a close encounter with. He the knocks human. over a bunch of stuff, and uh, like skeletons always do, you know. <laughs> he, has, he has an encounter <laughs> with a lady uh, shopping, yeah. a big shopping uh, cart. Yeah, bad but, driver. But, the, the, the supermarket's full I, of bad drivers, you know. Yeah, because I were, then he wonders. He, he manages to. He winds up at the pharmacy. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's you there going to give him a COVID shot. That could be it? me. You I think so. The mask, so you can't see the mustache. You can't see the mustache, but I'm but pretty sure is, that's you. He's there for a COVID shot. Yeah, and he's he at says, CVS. The pharmacist says, okay, where do I stick this? Because that's a good question on a skeleton, bone. you know. I've often <laughs> wondered that. In fact, I lay awake at night worrying about that. <laughs> That is an absolute challenge. <laughs> how, do you, how do you give a vaccine, a vaccination to a skeleton? I don't know. You should know. You're the guy. I've never vaccinated a skeleton before. See, Bob. I hope I never have to. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and what do you got there? A, we got a beautiful back cover, by Oh, Bob. yeah. Very cool. Look at that. Beautiful cool color. Um, so, you know, and Bob is a great guy, extremely talented. Extremely he's got one more here that you don't have. Let me let me show you. Yeah, this you is have Felicia's else. request. And Steve didn't get this one. But what this is, uh, let me see if I can explain this. Every year, Jake Parker posts a list of uh, prompts, drawing prompts, called Inktober can see it here and there's one for every day of October and you are challenged to do an ink drawing of the word every day in October and publish it someplace so what Bob did he made a little story 
he not only drew the word, he made it into a story. And that's what this uh, zine is. There's no words other than the word itself at the bottom of the page. Like it says fish here on this, on this one. And you can see there's a fishbowl guy there, right there. And uh, there is a story to it, but I was unable to determine what the story is. <laughs> but I think there's a story to it. It's a space story. And, uh, but he uses every word and draws. Every day he drew one of these ink drawings to form a story. And that's what this, this is. This is all Bob, is. right? This is huh? all Bob's work here? It's all Bob's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Yeah, really all the nice. way through. Oh, gosh, really nice. Yeah. And it's Back Porch Comics. That's his brand. Mm -hmm. And that's the back page. And, uh, you know, you should go to space just to meet Bob. I mean, he's a great guy. He won't have any time to talk to you, but you should go. <laughs> right. Well, I, I missed it this year. I mean, right up to the last minute, I was thinking about going. Tom Thelrath and I were going to share a table. Tom showed up there, but I wasn't able to make it. But I guarantee, I guarantee, Bob, I'll be there next year. And I'm talking to some of my pals. Larned might be there. He's I might about be it. able to go, too. I'd like to. Uh, I've been Jim a number Hayden of times and always enjoyed it. And you know. So some of our pals, if, if we're going to go, we're going to tell our friends, let's descend on, on space. Yes. Whoa, and that would be something. There, and I think we can make next year a big event. I mean, we I can, really, would really be the great. The thing is, I'll bring we'll my video camera. I'll bring my video camera. We'll do a show from space. Absolutely. Yeah, and I have one of those, too. I got a Sony camcorder. Yeah. There you go. So I'll bring mine. You bring yeah, yours. So we, Oh, uh, you want to do what? You want to do the small press show from space? Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. Sure, that would be. There's cool. a lot of ways to do it. Um, we could do it. So yeah, yeah. We'll so about I, I'm that. definitely it's it's at the top of my list. You know, for next yeah, year. I don't know space with me living in St. Louis and you're down in Florida. I don't know how we could meet up. Other, we'd have to drive separate. I would think. No, I'll catch a plane. Well, I'll get there. Yeah, you might not be in Florida next. Year. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, okay. Well, you might be in California. I got a girlfriend on the West Coast. I know uh, you might be in California. Could be. <laughs> or I might be in Colorado. I mean, there's there's ooh. possibilities. Ooh, ooh. All right. It's, it's just some stuff that's in the work. You guys can. You guys can like. Hmm. What is Steve talking about? Right. You know exactly. But I did get Bob did send me the uh, the program. Oh yeah, uh, the program. Time 2022. Yeah. And um, it's 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 a program. It shows you the layout of the um, tables convention. and all that. Yeah. Mm hmm. But it's got a few small press comics in it as well. Mm hmm. Uh, who's this one by? This one is by Christopher Williams, superhero. So your yeah, Bob puts in a puts in you know, a little bit of a. Yeah. Wow. Nice cool artwork. Comic that is nice. I like that a lot. Uh, I think our pal Kel Crum is in here somewhere. If I, I think he is it. too. Yeah. I know I saw it earlier. I don't know if Kel looks at our show. I don't know if Kel looks at our show, but he should. Kel Crum. Yes. One of the funniest people Ed on the Thud. face of the planet. Oh, yeah. One of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, you, Cornelia. You Cornelia totally is, is uh, uh, you can't miss that's Cal and you as soon as you see yeah. him, you know that's him. <laughs> Cornelia is his main character, but Ed Thud also comes along. Yeah. <laughs> so this is cool. Yeah. This is cool. You know, uh Cal is doing a movie, uh a Cornelia movie. Oh, is that He's, right? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, they're working on it. Yes, sir. Yep. Totally if I was in, to see that. If I was in Ohio, I'd want to be in the movie. But I'm not. So, gee, I wonder who's <laughs> going to do the voice. I don't know. I think maybe. Well, no, no. I think he's got an actress to do Cornelia. Yeah. That is that is superb. That's superb. Yeah. Well, next, Jeff Wood has sent us a bundle. Oh my gosh! 
Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, you might have one more than me, but I have three. I got three. I got a bunch. I'll just show you one thing, though, I thought was very nice of him to do. It's a notebook paper, and it is a original drawing in pencil that mm -hmm. he did and sent with his comics to me. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Jeff style. Jeff style. Yeah. And he, he signs oh, that Joff. You know, the formal Jeff. He yeah, with a G. Joff. <laughs> the G, Jeff, uh, the English yeah. uh, spelling. Yeah. And he's also sent another little card with some artwork on it. Uh -huh. Very nice. Original stuff. Nice originals, you, yeah. You can't have it because I got Jeff it. Jeff is such a good artist. And I've known yeah. I've known Jeff, gosh, since the 80s. He was actually a former chairman of the UFO, but he, he goes way back. Um, we met, he, in fact, we shared a room at the Chicago Comic Convention in 1986. Mm. Well, 1986. 1986, yeah. Speaking Jeff of 19... and Jim Main and I and a bunch of other small presses who slept on the floor in the bathroom <laughs> or wherever you could find <laughs> yeah. a spot. You we had like 12 a, people in that room. Much younger then, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Sleeping on the floor in 86 <laughs> is a lot different than sleeping on the floor in 2022. Right, I couldn't. That. I wouldn't want to do that right now. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd be aching for like several days afterwards. Yeah. I'd be over. Oh man. <laughs> but uh, speaking of 1986, he sent Fandom Team Up Two from 1986. Yeah. And this is a team up between Jeff Wood and Larry Blake. And I have the original somewhere. This is a. Oh my gosh! Really. But yeah, I have the original. I mean, I had it from way back then. I mean, that was a big event. Fandom yeah. team up. There was two issues of fandom team up, and this was the second one. And the first issue was, uh oh, I'm forgetting, but it was a couple other guys who were equally talented. But yeah, um, this was cool. But I, what I like about the reprint is the notes that he puts at the bottom of every right. single page. Yeah, that's yeah, that helps a lot. Very. He cool. goes into depth. And but Larry Blake was at his height, I think, when he did this. <laughs> Larry Blake's yeah. art is superb here, and so is, so is oh, Jeff. fantastic artist. Now, I don't know, um, it may say in here, and I may have missed it, uh, if they worked on separate pages or drew their own figures in each panel, or I don't know how they did it exactly. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I've, I've, it's been so long, but uh, yeah. I, I, I can tell definitely uh, I see a lot of Larry's writing style when I was reading it through yes. who wrote this and who wrote that. And I think... And of course, Larry's character is Nightshade. Um, that's his character. Night Star now. Uh, Nightshade, I think. Right. At that time, the character was called Nightshade. But uh, what was it, DC or somebody? I think DC had a character called Nightshade. Oh. And they threatened to sue uh, Larry okay. over the name. <laughs> after the, no kidding. Really? After the, you know, those guys. After yeah. this, he, he, uh, he changed. Well, how, what are you going to get? Can you add, tell me what you're going to get out of a small pressed cartoonist? Right. Yeah. Like we made, he made what, a lot of money. We're, we're going to get back everything you made on this comic. Oh yeah, he, he, they're gonna really make out. <laughs> but this is awesome artwork from both these guys, and it's you know from way back. It's got action panels. It's got all kinds of stuff in oh it. Gosh, the artwork and is it's, just superb. Oh yeah. You know, whether, it's, whether it's Jeff Wood or Larry Blake, yeah. You know they both. Here's something. Uh, Here's something from Jeff Wood where Nightstar actually meets a uh, Jeff Wood, a Nightshade. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Jeff drew that one. And here's one where uh, Larry Blake himself is featured. Right there. Larry That's Larry in 1986. Yep. He becomes a character in the stories. Yeah, he's in the story. Uh, he calls himself, uh, what the heck's his name in here? Uh, can't find it when you want it, but his name's not Larry Blake in the story, but that is Larry right. Blake. Uh, Lar Eckel, the creator. Lar yeah. Eckel, which is okay. a variation on Larry Blake, is the guy mm -hmm. who created uh, Nightshade. Okay. He happens to look 
exactly like Larry Blake. <laughs> with the long hair and everything yeah, in bell bottoms. Yeah. Yeah. Laura Echo was the guy who created uh, Nightshade. <laughs> this story explains a lot. It explains a lot about um, who they are. Um, and we haven't mentioned uh, much about Snow Bunny, but that's Jeff's character. Snow He's Bunny. Talking about and, Larry. But Snow Bunny. It actually, it's actually explained that Snow Bunny is actually a human being. Yeah, a human she just being, had bunny like, ears. Yeah, she's a different species of human yeah, being. But, like Neanderthal um, was a different species, right? But this, they, they happen to have bunny tail and bunny ears. Yeah. If you can see her on the cover, uh, on this on this uh, on this side, mm -hmm. that's Snow yep. Bunny right there, and of course she's on the back. There's Snow Bunny on the back, along with yep. Night Star or Nightshade, whatever. Yeah, they're up against some sinister maniac. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always yeah. mad maniac, mad scientist. Mm -hmm. Here he is, you know, blasting away. Yeah. Um, looks like Nightshade is a goner several times. Look like they, they got her. She she but she keeps getting back up. Uh yep. you know, they had her on the table and she was unconscious and they were draw, drawing her life's force or whatever, but somehow well, night that that Snow Bunny actually she had a globe over her head. Snowbody crashed that so she could speak uh Yeah, there's the globe over her head. out and saves the day. See the globe? Yeah. Yeah. Right there. So yeah. Anyway, great story. From 1986. Epic, epic, epic story. Yeah, that yeah. is really something. That, I that's... think this is, I, in my opinion, this is one of the finest small press comics that was published I'm, I'm back in the 80s. I'm thinking that myself. Back in the 1980s. It yeah. really stands the test of time. It's, it's as fresh now as new. Yeah. It's exciting. And man, the artwork is superb. Superb. And it's so, $9, but worth every penny of it. Absolutely, it's 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 a collection. I don't know how many pages it is, but it's it's huge. So yeah, nine bucks. It's a definite uh, small press collector's item. Everybody yeah. should have this seriously. Now here's Snow Bunny sample book right here from Jeff. Sample book 2020. Sample book 2020. Yep. And this has all kinds of. Um, there's a story in here. There's, a, you know, just samples of the work, beautiful yeah. artwork. And uh, Jeff is drawing in sort of a manga style. Uh, it's a Japanese a style, but a particular yeah. type of manga style. Um, and, you know, I mean, like, if you look at this. It's very, this one, you know, there's just lines. This one's very, yeah, very, you know, rather uh, almost no shady or anything like, like that. Just yeah. lines. But just showing a distinctive style, yeah. And Jeff has a distinctive style. I mean, oh yeah, he does. And then it changes to color. And that's a hilarious. Know. That's funny there. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. satire on the psycho shower screen, the shower scene, pin psycho. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of sexy stuff in these stories, and you may notice this. Yeah. <laughs> And she's saying she says, this cannot be the whole outfit. This cannot be the whole outfit. <laughs> Apparently it is though. <laughs> the Snow Bunny is a very voluptuous uh, female yeah. character. So now here is uh, on this page is Snow Bunny goes to Canada. Is in there. Goes to Canada. Yep. We have <laughs> that and we have almost a coloring book page here look at that you could talk this one here. yes nobody goes i gotta say something about this. this has got a hilarious scene this guy okay there's this um what are they trying to do here is, uh, there's a someone uh like a secret agent uh agency or something they're trying to transport to teleport a snow bunny mm. uh, to transport it from one place to another you know like beam me up scotty uh -huh. um, so you know they're doing this they're getting ready to do it and what happens is they transport only her clothes <laughs> she's up at, yeah so her clothes actually make it there <laughs> she doesn't 
So she's stuck up there in Canada without any clothes at all. There she is, yes. It's cold yeah. in Canada at certain times. Yeah. And yeah. what I love is is the expressions on the guy's <laughs> faces here. Look at this guy with his tongue hanging. Yeah, yeah. And the other guy falling off the table was just hanging on by his fingernails there. <laughs> That is one of the funniest things I've ever said. That is yeah. so funny. I just that crashed up when I saw that. She got and, uh, and that is Jeff Wood's artwork. Pushed out of her clothes. <laughs> and there's another color page toward the back. Yep. Now this story in the front here, um, more trouble with Hasvez, but uh, it's written by uh, Jeff. But the mm -hmm. artwork is by Ben Dunn, and I just want to mention that because I remember Ben Dunn way back in the 1980s. Oh. Um, and I don't, I only knew him for a little while, you know. And, uh, he, I don't, I haven't seen anything by him since. So I don't know if this is something recent or not. It looks more recent. Mm -hmm. But if Ben Dunn, Ben is still around. Mm -hmm. ooh, he wasn't this good back then. He's gotten a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely a lot. That's better. what happens if you keep on drawing, you know. Right. So good yep. to see that name. Good to see you. Ben, if you're out there watching somewhere, good to see you. Uh, and man, you've gotten so good. So and here's something good. by, uh, do you know a Risa Chandler? Challender, I'm sorry. Uh, nope, Risa don't know Challender. that. Challender. Look at that. Jeff, Jeff has a habit of Risa Challenger. Oh, yeah. I don't know that person. Okay, Jeff has a habit of uh, attracting a lot of artists. the finest yeah. talents out there. You know, he published when Tim Corrigan quit publishing Small Press Comics Explosion, uh -huh. uh, the Seattle Four took over, which was, and they started publishing Comics FX. Comics FX took over after Small Press Comics. Oh, Explosion. okay. I didn't know that. Right. When when Tim ceased, they said the torch is passed and they were publishing this. And, um, you know, it was pretty much like SPCE, mm -hmm. not quite as comprehensive, but they did a fantastic job. And it was four guys who lived in Seattle. It was Jeff Wood, Way Busby, who's passed mm -hmm. away since then. Yeah. Ed Vick and what's the name of the other guy? Jeff, remember, what was the name of the other guy? But there was four of you guys. And uh, it was it was great, you know. They published it tabloid size, I believe, for a while. Oh, wow! It changed to magazine size. It's been a long time, but yeah, they, that that was it was a zine that followed uh, SPCE when Tim originally when stopped. he quit. Oh boy! Wow! So, yeah. Surprised that I never coast. heard of that because I was always looking for that kind of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> comics effects. The comics effects. Mm -hmm. And here's a little uh, mini snow bunny. Uh, called uh, Bright Eyed and Bushy Tailed Number Two. You know what? This I, is from. It's fine. Go right ahead. I couldn't find my copy, but I think okay. I do have a copy. This is from uh, 1987, and it's a Snow Bunny story. And it's about uh, eight, uh, ten, uh, well, it's 14 pages yeah. in the story there. From the early days of mini from the early days, but the artwork you'd never know <laughs> was from that long ago. Look at yeah. that beautiful artwork. Like I say, Jeff's work stands the test of time. You're not that kidding. Yeah. Does. It's as great beautiful. now as it was then. Yeah. So I got to mention this sent, cover. Yeah. And he sent this. Yeah. For Snow Bunny. Uh, or Snow Bunny and her Phantasmagorical Dark Ride, or Snow Bunny's Dark Ride. This mm -hmm. cover is by Jeff Wood. And look how much he's improved. He was yeah. so good back then, but look at this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's amazing. What detail, what, and the color and everything. Yeah. Holy cow. I didn't even know it was Jeff. Calls his brand Pseudo Comics. But yeah, that is really, really nice work. Yeah. And this is a this is a, a dark and scary but very funny story. Uh-huh. Yeah, where um where Snow Bunny um she's actually looking for her, she's actually looking for her long lost sister and she ends up crashing. Where's she at? Is this on Earth? 
In any case, she ends up crashing somewhere, and and her destination is right ahead. And it's a haunted house. Oh yeah, there yeah. it is. Look at that. You wow. talk about a wild ride. Her adventures as she goes through this house, room by room. <laughs> I mean, right away you've got the portraits that are that are the portraits looking at her. They're watching her as she as she walks <laughs> by. Yeah. But it it goes it gets it gets crazy after that. Some of it's in color, and a lot of different artists contributed to this. Right. So I'm assuming. Uh, look at the list of artists that contributed to this. Yeah. All on the table There's of contents. There's a long list of people who worked oh, on this. All kinds of people. Yeah. I don't think oh. it's a jam comic. I think it's uh, maybe a little bit of a jam comic, but I think, but Jeff definitely held the thing together. Jeff was yeah. a, Jeff but, had the plot. You know, every different kind of style you want. Look at this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, a lot of it's in color. A lot of it's and in And this is by color. John P. Morgan. Yeah, and I think uh, I think he mentioned it. I think John Morgan was uh, passed away. Oh, one of them uh, may have. I don't know. One of them passed away. He mentioned mm -hmm. that at the beginning, uh, but uh, he, he was a great artist. Yeah. And um, Risa yeah. Challenger is That's in here somewhere. too again. Mm hmm Right there. So every few pages, there's a different artist. Yeah. Jason Waltrip. So beautiful. This Jason guy Waltrip, here. Waltrip, look at that. Yeah, this is John P. Morgan here. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is funny because um, she's being tempted by this demon guy, you know, with oh, yeah. his, his yes. ice cream con yeah. concoction, like a banana split or something. <laughs> and then uh, once she gets close to it, it actually uh, turns into a, a bulging eyed uh, demon uh, monster. This disgusting ice, looking creature. An ice cream monster. Not a lot of appetizing. Yeah. What uh -huh. <laughs> artists in here. They're just fantastic. Look at yeah, this. There's a few different styles, but it all holds together. For different some reason, styles, different. but each style is fantastic. Yeah, there's John P. Morgan. Okay, yeah, it says there's a memorial page. So it was John Morgan. Uh, oh, okay. He mentions that John P. Morgan had passed away. And here he is. Here's here's his zany, zany cartoony style, <laughs> uh, as, you were, as you were showing. But uh, he mentions that. Uh, yeah, here's some more John P. Morgan back. So here. cool that we have his artwork to look back at, you know, to look yeah. at now. Yeah, he had a wild style. I love that. That's more John P. Morgan. This is Mike Cigara. Uh, oh, yeah. Nobody finds a pretty little rose that turns into this sort of like little shop of horrors. Feed me. <laughs> Look at the colors, man. Really amazing. Nice. amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Joe England. That's Joe England's work. Joe England, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, there's yeah. so much in here. In it's... Snowbody, in true fashion, Snowbody somehow always ends up at uh, somewhere. She always ends up uh, naked. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that happens, but. But they never show anything. It's all in good taste. <laughs> this is 63 pages. 63 fantastic is, pages. The cover price is $20. But for all that color and all that artwork, wow. Amazing. Wow, you totally get your money's worth. And yeah. You can look at this for a here. long time. There's something from there's John. stuff in here you can read. The introduction is long. You can read. And, you know, it's just great. John P. Morgan does a character in here who's like, <laughs> looks like the cat in the hat. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And he, he I'm sure he did that on purpose. Rhyme. Mm -hmm. He talks in rhyme, and it's got, it's just like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> hello, hello, hello there, hello there. I act as your host, not a monster, nor pirate, nor demon, nor ghost. Yep. Just like the gardener, no need to feel fright. With a twist of my finger, I'll turn on the light. <laughs> and he goes on for three go. or four pages like that. <laughs> <laughs>
Fantastic. It's crazy. Snow. Now, he also included, for me, I don't know if you got this or not, Steve, 127K retread. And this now, is. I didn't get that. Yeah. Um, what this is, is um, eight by 11 sheets stapled together and uh, just a bunch of different stuff. Uh, the mailbag is in here, his mailbag, um, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff, um, cartoons, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I might have it somewhere, but it didn't come with this. Particular. Didn't come. And color pieces are in here. Whoops. Color, all kinds of stuff in here. <laughs> nice well cover, worth back it. cover by John Morgan, too. Yeah, yeah. Crazy science fiction, fantasy. So that's just a little, animals. you know, there's no price on this or anything. I don't know if uh, he includes that with your purchase of anything. I'm not sure. But it says $20 on the have. cover. It says $20 on the cover. I yeah. want to contact Jeff uh, just to be sure on that one. No, I'm talking about this. I don't know if there's any charge Oops. for this. Oh, that's probably an extra, like he said. I think it's kind of an extra kind of a, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. It's even got um, like, uh, I lost the page, but there's actual models of some of the characters that you can buy. Oh yeah. But I don't know that they're, in, cool. they look like these characters. See, and it, it may just be a coincidence that they look like them, but you could buy models like that. And it looks like Snow Bunny down looks there. Looks like Snow Bunny, yeah. So it, it might. And I believe be Jeff is. Wood is a, a design engineer by trade. I think that's what he does for a living, because uh, mm -hmm. his web page has some of his designs, uh, mechanical designs for industry. So apparently that's why he can draw things like yeah, he's that. Incredibly creative person. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, been around for a long time and he just gets better and better. So really a true, yeah, we really appreciate your work. Maybe he's really almost like one work. step or two steps above small press. He's like a pro, but uh -huh. it's so hard to be a pro. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, he is a pro. Well, you yeah, know? exactly. He's not getting exactly. paid he's as good as any, not getting paid to anybody bucks, else you would see. Yeah. So, I see a lot of stuff. I, well, you know, I mean, look it's at pro comics. quality artwork. Yeah. So, Yep. The last few times I went to a comic shop and tried to look at new comics, I'm like going through, yeah, yeah. what is this crap? You know, I, mean, I know I, press I, is so much better than this. I'm not, I've never have been a uh, superhero fan. Just never or, was. Or if you look at mainstream comics these days, and I am out of touch, so I can't yeah. say everything. Yeah. Uh, but the last few times I went to somewhere and looked at, you know, I, I'm thinking, um, you know, the art is flashy, you know, it's beautiful, whatever, it's flashy. All computer and out there, generated. But yeah. the story is terrible. <laughs> I know. You know? Yeah. yeah. The art's taken over and people have forgotten how to tell stories. Yeah. But in the small press, and people totally know how to different. tell stories. No. Yeah. yeah. And these are great stories. So. Yeah. So that was quite a batch of stuff we had this time. And we left? Another batch for the next episode already. So um, episode uh, 23, we'll have a, a good batch of comics. After that, uh, we may have time to get an interview in. So we've got plans. We got a, and, a couple uh, of people we would like to interview. Definitely. Yeah, some people said they would do it. Uh, you guys are ruined, watching. They are not afraid of ruining their reputation, uh, being on <laughs> with us. So. Uh, we're going to let them do it. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. I think we've wrapped up this one, and we will see you on the next one. Take it easy. Adios.